Amen. Amen. <laughs> um, we, 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 we've already started in two hours. I, just to be honest with you, um, this this second Saturday thing has really kind of throat me because I'm thinking Saturday is the second Saturday, and Saturday was is the first Saturday. Sir, that means you're too far back. <laughs> Come on up here, bless your heart. Um, I'm I'm gonna put my mic on when I go back in. Um, but but I want I want to change our sponsor reading uh, for the year, and I want you to <clears throat> to look at the screen. We're going to be looking at at Michael chapter seven and verse seven. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, seven and seven. Come on in, sister. Come on in. And and when 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 we read this. Um, Therefore, I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. That will be read. And then what we will say as a congregation is, we are developing patience. Amen? We are developing patience. Got it? So we can work with that's the way we're going to work with this this year and and uh the response may change if it does change it will be in the bulletin but right now that's what we're going to to stay with we are developing patience that's what we circle wasn't it we are developing patience because what the, the the passage deals with is being able to wait on the lord to hear and to answer our prayers. He said that he will answer. Or will we wait for him to answer? So, and so when we're waiting for the Lord, we're developing patience. Amen? Amen. All right, so we, I wanted to give that to you tonight, and uh, um, we'll go forward from there. Okay, Rob. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Let's, let's leave it on the screen so we get a chance to um, go through it ourselves. Personally, but before then, I would like to, on behalf of our pastor, Archbishop Carl McCone, and our first lady, Elder Christine McCone, we welcome each and every one of you out to our Wednesday night Bible study. We pray that each and every one of you are blessed this night, enriched in your growth and your spirit. Um, let's recognize, give God a hand clap of praise for this being our first Wednesday night Bible study of the year amen. in 2023. Amen. amen. I think that is so wonderful. Since everybody's standing, let's go ahead and read our, do our responsive reading. I'll read worship leader, and we'll um, say our theme as congregation. Therefore, I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will heal me, Micah 7, 7. And we all say, we are developing patience. One more time. We are developing patience. Give God a hand clap of praise for our new theme this year. Amen. Amen. You may take your seat. At this time, we will prepare our hearts and our mind for our spiritual echo, which will be conducted by our very own Deacon Cornelius Parnell. Give God a hand clap of praise for him. Good evening. Let us pray. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you as humble as we know how. Lord, we just want to tell you thank you. Thank you, O Lord, for life, health, and strength, O God. Thank you, O God, for waking us up this morning and allowing us to see another day, O God. You didn't have to do it, O God, but you did. And we thank you for it right now, in the precious name of Jesus. And now, Lord, I ask that you decrease me, O Lord, and increase you, so that I may speak to these, your people, O God. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Giving honor to the pastor, giving honor to the mother, giving honor to God, and giving honor to my wife and to you, the saints of God. I promise you I won't be before you long. 
The title of my echo tonight is Steps of Faith. Steps of Faith. I have a couple of scriptures for you that you could read at your leisure. Uh, first scripture is uh, Deuteronomy 10, verses 12 through 13, and Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. I have about uh, five points that I want to cover with you, and then, uh, then I'll be out of, you, out of your way. The Bible portrays the Christian life as a walk. It speaks of walking in the spirit, in God's way, in love, and in truth. Our lives then shouldn't be stagnant. They ought to move and develop and be increasingly like the life of Jesus. Scripture calls this sanctification. But what if you feel you're going backwards instead of forward? Turning around can happen only by faith in Christ. The first point I want to cover with you is you should have assurances that God keeps in every promise. The Bible contains guarantees of believers, including wisdom for asking, God's presence, and peace when we focus on him. Second point I want to make to you is we should also anticipate the Father's response. In other words, joyfully expect that your confidence in his promises will lead to blessings. The third point I want to cover with you is be aware daily of his involvement in your life. By spending time in the word and prayer, you will become sensitive to what he is doing in your life. The fourth point is pray boldly because you are God's child. Boldly means that you know that it is going to happen. So when you pray, you should pray boldly. Approaching the Father in such a manner isn't a prideful confidence, but an overflow of your assurance in him. And the fifth point I want to cover, which is obey the leading of the Holy Spirit. This is the true test of your belief. Remember, faith without action is dead. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. In my closing, in Hebrews chapter 11, starts with verse 1, is now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I thank you for your time. I pray that something has been said that will help you in your walk with God. Y'all pray my strength in the Lord. Thank you. She had suffered a mild stroke, and during the time being, she was staying in Elba in the uh, nursing home up there. So for the point of time, me and my family, we've been back and forth from Elba to Enterprise taking care of her. And we talked with her. She was doing pretty good. And the day before Christmas Eve, we talked to her, and she was kind of getting herself back. But at the time, she was suffering with not only just a stroke, but also dementia. And
and on December 26 at 30 that morning God called her home and it's been hard on us all because she left a huge mark in our lives of those of y'all remember the Whitehurst family in Enterprise she is the daughter of the late Cornelia and the late Benjamin Whitehurst that was my grandparents and her memorial will be tomorrow at Friendship Baptist Church at 11 o'clock and the home going service will be in Fairburn, Georgia at Temple of Prayer at 11. So I'm asking the church, I'm asking everybody to please to pray for the Whitehurst, the Coles, the Walkers, and Brooks family because we don't know how long we have here on this earth. And I've been telling my brothers, my brother and sister, that now since our grandparents is gone, our uncle is gone, and our, both our aunts is gone, our mother is the only one that's living on this side, on our mother's side of the family, and this is all we got. So now we got to be the ones to carry the next torch. Because that's what life is all about. Because you got to be the one to pass the next to the baton to the next one, the family. So I'm asking y'all, please pray for us. And thank you.
Come on, everybody, stand on your feet. Let's magnify the Lord. Come on and put your hands together. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, oh, oh magnify the Lord, for he, he is worthy to be praised. Hosanna, Hosanna. of my salvation Hosanna blessed be the rock oh blessed be the rock of my salvation oh oh magnify the Lord for he is he is worthy to be praised oh For he is, he is worthy to be praised. Hosanna, Hosanna, oh, blessed be the rock, oh, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, oh, blessed be the rock. Oh, blessed be the rock of my salvation. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad oh this is the day that the lord has made and i will rejoice and be glad in it oh this is the day yeah this is the day that the lord has made oh and i will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart i will enter his court with praise oh i will say this is the day that the lord has made and i will rejoice for he has made me glad oh he has made me glad he has made me glad and i will rejoice for he has made me glad he has made me glad he has made me glad and i will rejoice for he has made me glad oh this is the day oh this is the day that the lord has made that the lord has made yeah i will rejoice i will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad oh this is the day that the lord has made oh i will i'll rejoice and be glad in it oh this is the day this is the day that the lord has made hallelujah hallelujah thank you lord jesus if it had not been for the lord on my side tell me where would i be oh, where would i be if it had not been for the lord on my side tell me where would i be oh where would i be where would i be if it had not been for the lord 
on my side tell me where would i be oh tell me where where would i be where you know he kept my enemies away he bought the sunshine through a cloudy day yeah he wrapped me in the cradles of his arm because he knew i had been scattered at home oh if it had not been for the lord on my side tell me where would i be oh tell me where where would i be if it had not been for the lord on my side tell me where would i be oh where would i be where you know he kept my enemies away he bought the sunshine through a cloudy day yeah he wrapped me in the cradle of his arm because he knew i had been battered and scorned hey if it had not been for the lord on my side tell me where would i be oh tell me where where would i be hallelujah thank you where would I be? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Got him now? Turn it down. Okay. No, some more. All right. Still ringing. Something on somewhere. Okay. All right. Might have to turn it down just a little bit more. Is this on? You know, the, the, the Lord is just, he is so good. And don't let things like this bother you. It happens all the time, and we just don't see it. Amen. I want you to, mm -mm, we're still too loud. Amen. Tony. I don't, I don't know how many of you were awake on last evening when the, the storm was, was raging outside. And, uh, but I, I was awakened about 3 o'clock, and I was up until uh, the morning, uh, about 6 o'clock or so. And during that, during that time, um, the Lord and I were in deep and heavy conversation. And much of what, what the Lord was showing me and teaching me, I'm going to share that with you in the, in the next few um, uh, Sundays. 
um, there's a reason why things are the way that they are. And much of it is because of certain things that the church is doing and not doing. And the lead of the world is not mankind. It is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But he works through his church. And, and what we have to come to understand is how important we really are to the Lord. And I, I repeat this nearly every Sunday that the Lord says that we are his witnesses. And that if the world is going to see him, it's going to only see him through, through the church. And he wants us to understand how important it is that we know who we are, whose we are, and understand the importance of why the Lord has chosen us. And a lot of things are happening in the world today. There's a lot of things that are going on, and the question is asked, where is God? Well, I can answer one thing. He hadn't moved, that's for sure. He's, he's in the same place he was when Jesus was dying on the cross. When Jesus was resurrected, he's in the same place that th then he's right there now. And what I want you to, to see tonight is, is that our subject matter deals with, can God? It asks a question first. Can God? And then it answers the question, God can. And so that says to me that, that there is nothing that is impossible with God. And in asking, can God, he answers us and let us know God can. And when we look in... Um, Psalms, you see that? Mine is a little faded. Um, in Psalms chapter 18, verses 12 and 20, um, I think that we can, we can go from there with, with the lesson tonight as we, as we review these, these scriptures. And the question being asked, can God? And the answer, God can. And I think that's important for us where we are now and the things that we see happening around us. And I'm asking you to, to really be praying and set aside a day, if we can, fasting and praying. If we can't do that, I want you to give your lunch hour or your lunch time to the Lord and praying and reading. Because what the Lord has shown me and what the Lord is dealing with, God has a great desire to bless his people, to to put them out front in this world that we're living in to let people know that they belong to me and that I made them certain promises and I am keeping the promises that I made to them. But the problem being is, is that so much is happening that is causing many to doubt whether I am yet God and God all by myself. But I believe that this lesson will prove that he is God and God all by himself. Um, 
many times we pray for, for God to, to make changes in our lives. We believe God for certain things and when they, when they don't happen the way we think they should, we feel that God has not answered us, but it's not true. God will never go against his will to satisfy us. So if God has not answered, it doesn't mean that he's not going to answer or he has not answered the way you thought he would. So tonight, as we look at this, I want us to see that as our friend I said, there is two groups of people. The can God, the God can group versus the <laughs> can God group. And we have both sets of people in the church. Can God do this? God can. And the point that I really want to make tonight is, is that God can do anything that his word says from Genesis to Revelation. That is where God operates. Genesis to Revelation. And the Bible is not outdated. Man is outdated. The Bible is not outdated. But man is trying to get ahead of, of God. And I want us to see tonight that we need to know this year as we go forward what it is that God has promised us. And when we can pray according to the promises of God, we don't have to worry about is there going to be an answer because there is an answer, because he always keeps his promise. You see, we don't have to go to God iffy and leave the same way. We can go to God with the assurance that he's going to hear and answer the prayer because that's what he said in his word. And when we can do that, then what we see in the world may bother us, but it won't hinder us. And it bothers us to the point that we want to do something about the situation. We want to make change, but we don't know how to make change. So when we know what God has said about a situation, we don't have to wonder, we just apply. And so, so, so as we as we look at this tonight, and as, as we view this number of Psalms, I believe that the Lord will surely speak to us and allow us to understand how important it is that we have a right relationship with him. Amen? And so would you be so kind as to Place that passage of scripture up there for us. And I want us to, to hear, not across the aisle, not behind us, not in front of us, but on the pew that we are on. In other words, let God speak to me. And when God speaks to me, then I'm able to speak to somebody else. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Psalms 12 through 20. Them fellas back there don't have no paper. That's got to be, that's got to be them two Macs back there. We don't ever have a problem until them two get in there then you, anybody else get in there with one of them, they make it pretty good. But when they get back there together, we're going to keep, we're, Tony, that's your, what, Tony? 
That's your assignment. You, you keep them two apart back then. So, so, marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers. Marvelous things to say they did. In the land of Egypt, in the field of Zon. Now, he divided the sea and caused them to pass through, and he made the waters to stand as a heap. Hold it right there. When we look at it, he says, said the marvelous things that he did. Yeah. Wow. There we go, there we go. And see, when you, when you, start, when you start looking at that, it kind of says to me, it's beyond comprehension. You know, I don't understand it, but I saw it. Yes. You see, and, and, and do we have to understand something to accept it? But God does not leave us without understanding. And, and these things that, that he's, he's describing to us, saying to us, is that even while God's people were in bondage, God was yet doing great things. And that says to us that <clears throat> we don't have to be where we want to be for God to bless us. Now, now hear what I say. We don't have to be where we want to be for God to bless us. Many times, God blesses us to put us to, in the place where he wants us. And so, so, he, so when, he, when, he, when he says to him, he, he, I'm wanting you to see and understand that, that God has done marvelous things. When we were in, in, in Egypt, we had no problems because God has done marvelous, marvelous things. Let's go to the next one, please. Man, change the, the description. You know what? I guess I'm, let me go back down. What you say, McKinney? Don't go back down. Don't go back. Okay. They get it. <laughs> McKinney, go go on up here to the stand. I think you can teach this lesson. Now. So, so now he began to describe those marvelous things. And I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I believe that the Lord warning us to see that there is no place that we can be where he can't help us. There's no situation that we can find ourselves in that God cannot help us. And, and this lesson is, is describing to us that we may have felt that we're in a situation where there's no help, but God says it's not so. You belong to me. And what I'm doing, I'm giving you a history of what I can do and what I've already done. And I'm not leaving you where you are. I'm letting you know that I have divided the sea. And I caused the people to pass through. And he made the waters to stand up as a heap, as a guard, as a... A, a wall that whereas to it would not hinder his people. Now, now just think if God can do that with a sea and many times we feel that our lives is drowning because of the things that we see, the things that we feel, God can divide those seeds and make them work for us rather than against us, you see. And, 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 and he wants them to understand that this didn't happen to you without my permission. And what he wanted us to understand is that you're going to pass through. In other words, you're not in this to stay, you're just passing through this. Now, whether this would add something to your life or take away from you, but it all worked for your good. You see that? 
And, 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 and many times it's easy talking about a situation, but when you're having to live it, it's totally a different thing. And see, what God wanted us to understand is, is that, that if you were in this, you're not there by yourself. But you're saying, can I? And I'm saying to you, yes, I can. But I'm going to only operate off of one little thing that I declared that you must have, and that is faith. You can't buy this. It's already been purchased. All you have to do is use that little faith that I gave you. And the word teaches us that he's given all of us a what? A measure. So we all have it, but, but there are certain things that happen in our life where we feel like we don't. That we're not going to make it. It's not going to work. But what God is saying to us, if I permitted it, I've already made a way. And see, what we, what we can't deal with is not this or that, is this. It's that part and that, that we can't see, that part that's between now and then, we can't see that and that we can't deal with that because we can't see that. I don't know how God is going to bring me out of this, but I got to know that he will. He will. Yes. But then Satan comes in the back door and tells you, oh, no, you ain't going to make it. No, no, that's, that's not going to happen. This is what's enough. And what we're having to say is that's not what God said. So that's how the question is asked, can God? Say, yes, he can, you see. And, and, and in any situation that we find ourselves in, that's the first thing that Satan's going to throw in our heart is, can God deliver you? Can God help you out of this situation that you're in? Why didn't he let it happen anyhow? And all you need to do is say, he can. But you're still in it, but he can. You see, and what Satan won't let you know is, is that the reason God leaves us in, he's working. Mm. Come on in now. See, he's, he's, he, he's working in this situation to, 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 to help us to come to the point where we really, really learn how to trust him. You see, the question is not asked tonight for, for, for one to feel uh, doubtful. It's a, it's a question that says, I want you to be assured of the fact that whatever happened, God is operating. You see? And, and, and when we can see that and when we can accept that, we can go forward and allow God to do what he wanted to do. He divided the seas and caused them to pass through, and he made the waters to stand up as a heap. There is protection even in our danger. There is protection for us even in things that are not working the way we would have them. We have to understand that God is at work in this. And it's hard sometimes to even think and feel that because of the fact we're going off of our, there we go. The humanism in us comes out. But what we have to understand, we have to turn that over to the divine part. And when we do that, then we can hear the answer, God can. You see? And I don't care how much Satan throws at us, we have to leave knowing that God, God can. That he can, he will handle the situation. So, so, so when, 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 we, when we have a question about the abilities of God, we have to understand that he can, he can work this out. So it says that God can turn night into day. He can do that. He can turn nights into day. In 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, it says, In whom the God of this world has blinded their minds. Talking about people of the world. Blinded their minds. They can't see the same way that you see. Blinded by deceitfulness. Blinded to the need of them having a savior who is Jesus Christ in their lives, blinded by the joy of just being merely what? Saved. Just, just saved, get happy about being saved. And 
This is something that I, I saw, that man can get so wrapped up into this life that he has forgotten about the next life. See, our rejoicing is not in reality for this life. It's for the next life. You see, this life here is going to end, but the next one is not going to end. And that's why the question is going to be asked, would you rather live with God or live without God? And, 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 and the question is not talking about here on earth, because men say, oh, I can live without him. But, but when you talk about life, that means no ending. Can you live without him? No. Because hell is a place of death. And anyone that is not going to heaven is going to hell. And when you go to hell, you're going to die. And, and, and the dying is not an unconscious thing. It's a conscious thing. Good God. That we're asked that we're going to live the reality of the life that we refuse to receive. And what God wanted us to understand is that, that, that whatever the problem may be, he wants us to understand that I can work it up. There are people today, as we look and we listen to the news and we listen to certain things, there are people who are blinded to the fact that they need Jesus in their lives. They're blinded by the fact that, hey, well, I got a good job, or I got this, I got that. But that's not a permanent thing, you see. You know, I oftentimes think about a person having all the joy they want on this side. But then when the Lord called them home, they can't cross over into real joy. Then what are they going to do? And see, so what, 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 what I believe that God wanting the church to understand is that you are never in a situation that I can't bring you out. Instead of asking why you're in it, ask what can I learn from it? Because the fact is, is that as a Christian, you enter not into anything that God has not permitted to be so. So the Lord has allowed you, us to be in certain things so he can teach us, so he can show us some things. You know, this is not all that God wants you to have on earth. The Lord is saying that the church ought to be in the lead in every aspect. But we are not. We are not. We are not in that because we have not followed the things that God told us to do to cause us to be in the lead. You know. You know. Uh, I was telling Mother uh, the day uh, the young man asked me say, "Say you're a millionaire, ain't you?" I said, "Yeah." Mm -hmm. He said, "You got this. You got this. You got this." I said, "That's not why I'm a millionaire." I said, I'm a millionaire because I got Christ. I said, now you, now you go on and look up uh, what a millionaire is, and then you compare it. He said, uh-uh. He said, because you're right. All the riches is in Christ. Boy, that, that, that's. So I said, oh, at least we got one coming on. <laughs> we got one coming on. And see, what, what I'm saying is, is that be very careful how you carry yourself around young people. We don't know that we have an impact on them one way or the other. And what God is saying to us as people have asked, what's going to happen to our youth? What's going to happen to our youth is what we show and teach them. That's what's going to happen. And what God is saying is, I'm saying to you, he says, that you will never be in a situation that I can't bring you out of. But use the situation as a teaching tool to help somebody else to see who I am. You can't help them if you're going to always be complaining. Let the joy of the Lord ring in you. Know that, hey, he ain't got here yet, but I know he's on his way because he promised. And in the meantime, I'm being kept by the promise because he promised me that he was going to come see about me. And see, and when we, can, when we can see that, then we can know that, hey, whatever situation is, I'm not alone in that. God is there with me. 
He has put angels around me that I can summon and say, hey, can, can you help me? You know, sometimes people think, well, it didn't get me this time. The only reason it didn't get you because the angels that were assigned to you protected you. Mm. You know, I was telling you last night about three o'clock and this thing started growing and keying on. I, I, I was up, you know, old folk, you know, we you don't be sleeping when there's thunder and lightning. You know, you, you got to be watching and talking to the Lord. And it's, it's, I mean, some of you all can sleep while it's thundering, but I, I got to be up looking at him. I got to hear what he got to say. And, 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 I, and I was sitting in my study and I was praying. I said, Lord, Lord, protect me. And I hope she doesn't get upset. She bust me out this morning. I told her, I said, oh, I'm tired. I'm sleeping. I said, I was up. She said, what you doing up? I said, God was watching. Because <laughs> <laughs> now you know I. I said, yes, ma'am. I went on till I got outside. Then I, I, I got big outside. I, who she thinks she talking to? <laughs> I know God was watching. I, and, and little old voice said, why didn't you say that when you was inside? I said, I didn't. let me go into the church. So, so what I'm saying to you is, is that when the question is asked, and it's going to be asked to you, can God do this? You know, and you ought to tell me, yes, he can. You see, we see what the Lord wants us to have, the attitude that Jesus had, that no matter what is happening, my father is with me. And, and because my father is with me, I am divinely protected. You see that? So now, now Jesus' father says that he's with you and me. So I am and you are what? Divinely protected. Protected. Nothing gets through to us but what God allows, and, 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 and when He allows it to happen, Brother Deacon, guess what? He sends the help along with it. And many times He sends the help ahead. We just don't see it. You see. And, and I believe that when we begin to study angels, we'll understand that we are never alone because He has assigned them to be with us. And so he wants us to understand that, that we have to take the blinds off of the people by the life that we live. Not what we say, but by the life that we live. The life that we live will allow people to see who God really is. You see, and that's why God has laid down in his word ways and means for us to live so we don't have to act and be like the world. We can be in a rejoiceful mode every day of our lives sooner or later. It doesn't say it's going to be every second, a minute of the day, but it can be a joyful time. Because we know without a shadow of doubt, God can. They, that many people are, are blinded by the things that happen to them rather than what God is, is doing with them. You see. And when the Lord says that, that you are my witness, he may allow something to happen to you in the presence of somebody else to teach them how to carry themselves. And many times God will put us in a position where other people are watching us so we can be a teacher to them. Hmm. See, one of the things that I've come to understand after all these years being out of the military, it wasn't my smartness or my rank that put me where God put me where I was. And he put me there so I could be a witness for people that come or uh, was around. And prayerfully that it rubbed off. But what we have to understand is, is that there is nothing impossible with God, you see. And I'm, I believe that, that this lesson is, is because we haven't seen anything yet. I believe that God said there's others, there's things that are coming your way that if you are not grounded in me, it's going gonna, it's gonna to blow you away, you see. We don't understand a whole lot of things, but we have a God that we can trust. You see, we have a God that we can trust. And when we trust him, we'll see what he can do. And you and I both know that many are blinded. They're blinded to the joy that they see we have. They think it's a false thing. They think that we're putting on. But when you can trust God, you don't have a reason to frown. You don't have a, a reason to allow Satan to take over. 
you know. That when you know that you can trust him, when you know that God has proven himself to you, you don't have anything to worry about whatsoever. It says, this one thing I know, whereas I was blind, and now I see. That young man said that. He said, now, I know I was blind. <laughs> but now I can see. So in whom the God of this world has blinded the eyes of men, of them which believe not. Blinded the eyes of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. God did it. <laughs> but not the God of the heavens. The God of this world. Talking about Satan. <laughs> and if you don't watch that, it'll, it'll trick you into the fact of saying, hey, but it says the God of this what? This world. this world. Satan has blinded the people. He's blinded them that believe not. But he can't blind the ones that believe. He's, blind, he's blinded those that don't, that don't believe. Because he doesn't want the truth of the word of God to shine forth in their life. What that means is to have effect in their lives. To bring about a change. To bring about a difference in their lives. Has them blinded to the fact. You have to stay where you are. You have to remain where you are. But that's not so. The old folks say he's a bring me out of. And see, that, that says to me, no person has to remain in a dysfunctional state that is functional. Because God can bring them out. You see, we all was not born with a silver spoon in our mouths, but we worked our way till we got a little piece of it. Yeah. And see, what we have to do, we have to teach this to our younger generation because as they come along, they're going to feel the shoes of those of us who are going on, come on now, to be with the Lord are getting older where we are not able to do like we, what we need to. These are the ones that have to feel that you. And that's why we have to be sure that our lives is right before them. Daddy, you got to be daddy. Mama, you got to be mama. Christians, you got to be Christians. Because we are the light that is shining on the lives of other people. This is not a showcase. This is not Lawrence Welp or whatever all them folk be trying. This is reality. This is God saying to the church, you better wake up. I've given you the details of life and you need to live by that. You don't need to be a want. You don't need to be sorrowful. You need to be a joyful people. Yes, you're not going to be up all the time, but there ought to be means if you say, I'm coming out of this. I'm not going to remain in this state. God has done something for me. If I have to look back 20 years to get a little something, I know he's done something for me. And I'm not going to allow you to keep me in this state, you see. And that's what we have to tell, tell our children and our loved ones. You can't remain where you are and think that God is going to bless you. You got to come out from where you are into where God will have you for you to receive what God has for you. You see. You know, now whatever I have for my son and my grandchildren at home, they're going to have to come get it. You, you, you see what I'm saying? They're going to have to come get it. If they come and get it, it's theirs to have. But if they're sitting back waiting for me to send it to them, and they're able, come on now, stay with me here now. And they're able to do, and if I do that, you know what, I'm, I'm crippling the children. I'm making them dependent when they are not to be. You see? And, and if we don't grab this generation now and teach that, we're going to have a problem in the next five years that is greater than the one that we have right now. You think that these young men killing one another something, you just wait. If we don't do something, we haven't seen anything yet. 
And these, do, do, oh God, I know I'm in trouble. Do you know that the laws that are being passed Yes, it's fixing so they can do that. I know I get in trouble, but let me tell you something. The thing that people fear today is a mixed generation. That's what they fear. On both sides of the fence. You can't stop it. But it's already here, so you got to deal with that. You got to teach them like we were taught. They still human, they still people, they still can be called God's children. But you can't help people by handicapping them. You can't help people by saying it's right when you know it's wrong. You can't help people by keeping your mouth closed because you're going to hurt somebody and run somebody off. Wrong is just wrong. And we always want to put all the blame on the preacher, but the preacher ain't the only one to tell folks what's right. Amen. All of our lives that have been saved and born again, we are teachers. We may not know what John 1 said, but we do know that I've been saved. And see, what God is saying to us through this lesson is, is that you need to stop saying what you can't do and believe that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. That's where your strength comes from. So, so, so that's what I want. That's part that I can share with you, you tonight and not go over our time. But with this, it's, just, it's just the idea that we hear so much today about, oh, my, I can't this and I can't that. You can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. Let this mind be in you that was also in See what the Lord is saying. We have to come to the where we can take this word and think things into possibility. And what that means is, if the Lord said it, I believe it, and if I put forth an effort, it can happen. But we think that we can believe and make it happen. No, you have to put forth some effort to make it happen. Even when the Lord said just believe, he told us what we had to believe, didn't he so? And when we believe that, it came in to be effective. So he says to us, when you teach someone your life, you're going to leave that with them. So he said, that's why you have to be careful how you carry yourself around people. You just can't be good sitting on the pews. So you got to be good everywhere that you go to the best of your ability. And you see, the, the richness that we have in Christ Jesus should be expressed through the life that we live, through our giving, through our living, through whatever we do for God. That's how it's expressed. We are live people. We are people of hope. We are people that believe God can do anything. And that's the way we have to, we have to live. I'm going to say this number three. I was sharing with a young man about three months ago. He said to me, he said, you know, I got this, I got this. This is wrong, that's wrong. I'm this behind, I'm this behind. I said, son, I said, you, you're Christian? He said, yes. I said, uh, you go to church? He said, yes. I said, you read your word? He said, yes. I said, do you obey your word? <clears throat> Um, I said, you don't have to say anything. The word is sure. See, the, wor the, the word is not going to change. And I said to him, the reason you're in the situation that you're in, you know what's right, but you don't do it. And he said, I just, I, I, I'm just over... I don't know, I, I, I'm in debt, I, I'm about to lose, I'm about, everything was naked. And I said, I said, I asked him one little word and he shut him up. I said, do you tithe? He said, no. I said, there your problem is. Oh, you don't have to give? I said, where are you from? What Bible you been reading? Whose house you been staying in? And he started laughing. And the first thing he said, oh, I know what you're going to say now. You're going to take me to Malachi. No, I'm going to take you to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. 
And I want you to end up in Revelation at the end. I said, you'll find out that it ain't about what you think it's about. It's about living a life according to the word of God. If you live in a life according to the word of God, you don't have to worry about these things that you're worried about now. You don't have to worry about it. Three months later, that young man, I saw him again. And he said, you were right. I said, no, I wasn't right. The word was right. Debt's being paid off, saved everything that he had because he started doing what the word said. And I'm not talking about just giving his money. I'm talking about living right, treating people right, asking people to forgive when he's done wrong, doing the right thing. His problem was he didn't know what this said. Going on ism, going on what people said rather than knowing for himself. There's no way in the word that it's all right for you to mistreat nobody. There's no way in the word that you can talk to and act with people any kind of way. It's not in the word. And when that young man found out, started reading the word for himself, started applying the word, God just made him blossom. And I believe that that's what God wants to do with all of us. He wants us to trust what the word says about our life, about our finances, about our worship, about everything it is, is covered in this word. And I believe that if you can, you can take this paper and finish it tonight or in your leisure time and you read, can God? You'll be able to say, God can. God bless you and thank you so much. Yeah. Amen. Question is, can God? God can is the response. Amen. God can. We thank um, God for blessing us with our message this night. We thank Pastor for sharing the word of God with us. I uh, pray that your spirit was enriched, that your faith was received some growth, and that you were able to truly look back at yourself and ask that question and be able to honestly answer it, God can for yourself. Because sometimes we do get caught up in the moments and the times in the situation that's going on, and we begin to doubt, and we do question, can God? But we all know that God can. So let's give God another hand clap of praise. <laughs> Amen. At this, at this time, if there's anyone here that is, not a, that is not saved, after hearing the word, and you have a desire in your heart to give your life to Christ, will you please stand at this time and be recognized so that we can um, pray with you? and lead you into discipleship. Will there be anyone, anyone? If there's anyone on social media that's watching, or YouTube that's watching um, um, the video, we ask at this time if um, you are not saved and you want to give your life to Christ, uh, please contact us. Uh, we can put our phone number up on the um, screen so you can see it. And you give us a call here and we will get in contact with you as well. If not here, then go to another Bible-believing church. Find someone that you can confess Christ so that you can receive salvation. Amen. Is there anyone here that um, desire to become a member of Devil Christian Fellowship? I'm looking around. I don't see many. Do we have any visitors? Amen. So we all family here. Amen. At this time, we'll move on with our service. We thank God for the lesson. We ask that uh, you prepare yourself, your hearts and your mind as we move into our announcements. Following our announcement, we will also um, have opportunity for tithes and offering. Amen. Good evening. We have a couple of cards. Thank you, DCFWC. Thank you so much for your prayers and your presence. We will always be grateful to you for all you do for us, Pastor Holt and family.
Because of you, there's someone who is thanking God today, someone who appreciates your warm and caring way, someone who's remembering the special things you do and wishing you his blessings every day the whole year through. Deacon Tyrone and Sister Ruby. Announcements, January 4, 2023. Regularly scheduled meetings and rehearsal for the week include Monday, January 9th at 5 p.m. Monday night prayer, at 6 p.m. Pastor's Aid Hospitality Ministry, and at 6 p.m. The Gap Ministry, at 6.30 p.m. The Christian Women Ministry. Finance is in the process of preparing the 2022 annual contribution reports. If you moved last year, now is the time to update your address to ensure the accuracy of your report. Announcements from the music department. Voices of Praise team rehearsal tomorrow, January 5th at 6 p.m. Male chorus rehearsal next Thursday, January 12th at 6 p.m. The DCFWC church family will travel to Elam Christian Fellowship Baptist Church on January 8th, 2023 for the pastoral installation services to install Pastor Donald D. Boom, Sr., pastor of Elam Christian Fellowship Baptist Church. We will leave immediately following our 11 a.m. worship service. The installation service will start at 3 p.m. The annual church business meeting is scheduled for January 14, 2023 at 10 o'clock a.m. Baptism, foot washing, and Holy Communion will take place at the conclusion of the meeting. A sign-up sheet for baptism has been placed in the information room. The audio-visual audio ministry needs you. Consider using your gift by becoming a part of this ministry. Point of contact is Elder Robert Ellis. Deacon McMullen is soliciting your assistance to help with the upcoming Peace Parade program. We will not march as we have done in the past years. The Peace Parade program will take place on January 22, 2023. Please see Deacon McMullen if you are available to assist with the preparation for this year's program. The annual community Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. celebration will take place on Sunday, January 15, 2023 at 4 p.m. at the Enterprise Civic Center located on, Mc, on Neil McCaff Road, Highway 167. The guest speaker is our very own Archbishop Carl McCone. Directing the community choir for this event is also one of our very own, Minister Yolanda Daniels Milton. Social distancing and masks will be required. All community announcements with flyers and or more detailed information along with DCFWC sign-up sheets, registration forms, etc., cetera, are in the information binder located in the information room. Thank each of you in advance for supporting these events and scheduled meetings, as well as praying, visiting, or telephoning those who are incapacitated and or bereaved. offering time. We need to tie this envelope. The usher will be moving through the house to give you one. What I have before me here is a good ground box. If you have a correspondence for our pastor or you would like to plant a seed, you may place it in this box. No ties and offering emeralds go in this box. You may place your ties and offering in the baskets that the deacons are holding. If you could please stand for the reading of our offertory scripture. It'll be coming from Malachi 3 and 10. And it reads, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, here which says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we say thank you. Thank you one more time, Father God. Thank you for this opportunity we have before you to give back what already belongs to you, O Father God, a portion, Lord Father God. And Lord, we just ask you to just bless those who gave and bless those who had a desire to give but couldn't, Lord Father God. And Lord, we just ask that this be used to continue to further spread this ministry and build the kingdom. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Would all the owls please face the center? You are now in the hands of our usher.
Amen. We thank everyone for your giving at this time. We're, before we wrap up, we want to check and see if our first lady have anything she would like to share with the congregation. If not, amen. Everyone, please stand. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we thank you for blessing us this day. We thank you for your holy word, which has rinsed our hearts and our mind, Father God. We ask that you continue to let it sit with us, Father God, as we leave from this place, Father God. Do, do not let it wash away through the breeze or anything, Father God. But let it encourage us to be encouraged knowing that you can, when we are challenged by an enemy or a situation that questions, can God. So we just thank you, Father God, for your confidence you have placed in us of you and your word, Father God. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins, who has made a way out of no way for us, Father God, that was born into a sinful situation, nature, and world, Father God. We just thank you. We ask that you bless each and every one, Father God, before the this place, bless them, Father God. Bless our pastor. Bless them as they travel on their way to their homes, Father God. Bless those that have watched us from social media, online, and YouTube. And we just thank you for each and every one, God. We just pray strength for each and every family. And we ask that you continue to watch over each and every one, those that are not doing well, Father God, those that are bereaved, and those that need you more today than they did yesterday, that might not even know how bad they need you, Father God. We praise you. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. And we thank you for our very own lives, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.